Hi and welcome back. In this video we're going to go ahead and create the third template that we're going to use for this project and that's going to be the template that's going to have one large content area down here in the main area but also a sliding banner up here at this top most area. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've gone ahead and opened up my basic template here. Actually, if I go into Files, and you'll see in your Templates folder, there's the basic DWT, and DWT is the uh, default extension for a Dreamweaver template. I'm going to go ahead and use that as the starting point for this third template. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that to open it up, and then I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to select Save as Template again. And this time, instead of calling it Basic, I'm going to go ahead and call it Slider. And again, you can call your templates whatever you want. I just chose slider. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And you should see the name changes up here in your tab. And when you look in your files panel, you should now see a third template called DWT. And I did that because this has most of the content that we're going to need for our new template, including this editable region down here. And the only thing we're going to modify is this banner area right up here. So let's go ahead first and go get the material out of the framework that we're going to need to create this uh, banner slider. And a slider is just sort of a generic name for something that changes in uh, jQuery. So in this case, we're going to have a fading effect on this banner. So I'm going to go ahead over here to the Files panel, and I'm going to click this drop down, and I'm going to go into my framework. And if you don't have the framework, you can go to Google and search for jQuery slider, and you'll see there are lots of them that are available. I'm going to go ahead and go into my JavaScript folder there, and then I'm going to go into plugins here, and I'm going to go ahead and select banner slider. And you can see there are three different files in here. This is the instructions to set up the uh, slider and then this is the necessary CSS and JavaScript file. We want to go ahead and open up those instructions. And you can see it gives you just step-by-step -step instructions as far as what to do. Now the first thing that we need to do to set up the slider is move those other two f files into an appropriate location inside of our, um, our design. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one, then hold the shift key down and click on the second one. Just need those two. And then I'm going to right click, select edit and copy. So you just copy those two files. And now I'm going to go back into our video project folder. And I'm going to right click on the CSS, go to edit and paste. And you should see those two files, slider.css and slider.js are pasted in there. Now the CSS is in the right place, but the JavaScript isn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag it down on top of the JS folder. So now you should see you've got slider.css and slider.js in the appropriate folders. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to copy these two lines of code here into the head section of our template. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy and then I'm going to come back into my template and go into code view. And what these two scripts do is they call the main jQuery library and they also call the jQuery plugin that's going to create the transition effect for us. Now again if you're using my template I already have a link to jQuery right here. So you actually only need to copy and paste one of these lines. But make sure that you have this line here for jQuery before you only do the one. And I already have the one, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it again. Come back in here, click to the right of that, it gives me an extra line, and just paste that in there. And you want to make sure that this plugin comes after the jQuery.js. And again, if you don't have jQuery, you can go to uh, jQuery.com or jQuery.org and download it. Now, in the source attribute for this line that we just pasted in, you're going to see here it says insert path to jQuery slider plugin here. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to highlight the whole thing from the opening quote to the closing quote. And then I'm just going to do a quotation mark. I'll get Dreamweaver's browse prompt up. So I can just simply hit enter. And it brings me into the select file dialog box. And you'll remember we dragged that into the JS folder. So I'm going to double click on that. And then I'm going to select the slider plugin and click OK. And you should now see it says slash JS slash slider dot JS. So that's the first step that we need to do. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. The second step that we need to do is we need to insert a link to the slider CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and copy it. And then come back into my template. And you'll see here's the line. There are my existing style sheets right there. I want to click on the line after that and just hit enter to give myself a little more space. And then I'm just going to go ahead and paste that into that location. And again, highlight the area that says insert path. Everything from the opening quote to the closing quote. Type a quotation mark on your keyboard. That brings up the browse option. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it brings me right back in here. And there is my slider.js. So I'll go ahead and click OK there. And you can now see the appropriate link. Whoops, I selected slider.js, didn't I there? And this needs to be the CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that again and hit browse. Come up go into my CSS folder. There is my slider.css and click OK. If you have a problem with installing the slider, usually the first thing I go about back and check is to make sure that the paths are all appropriate. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now that we have those um, items taken care of, let's come back to our slider page code option. Step three is to go ahead and insert this script in here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that block of text. And that's everything from the opening script tag to the closing script tag. And I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm going to go back into my template. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in actually right below where I pasted in my CSS. It actually doesn't matter where you paste it in as long as it's in the head section and as long as it's after both jQuery and the slider.js there. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that in that area right there. So now we have that code in and again I'll save and come back in here. We've done step three. Step four is to actually add the content. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything in step four from this opening div here all the way down to this closing div. You need to highlight that whole block there. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm going to come back into my template. Now this is the code that's actually going to add the images to your slider. So this isn't in the head section. We're going to do add this to the body section. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and you can see I'm in my body section here. And here's the div that's going to hold that slider there. And again, right now it's just got a single placeholder image in it. So I want to go ahead and highlight everything again from the opening div to the closing div. Right click and choose paste. And that will paste that whole block of text in there. Now, the important points to remember on this, if you're doing this on your own, Remember that the div that contains the, the um, image transition has to have the ID slider. And the unordered list has to have the ID slider content. Now after this, you actually have a couple of different options here. You can see this block of text here. This is what you're going to use if the individual el to call out the individual images if the individual images are going to have links attached to them. In other words, if you want the visitor to be able to click on the banner and go to a link and go to another page, you would use this code right here. If you're not going to have a link, you want to go ahead and use this code here. 
and that's what we're going to go ahead and use. We're going to use this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the rest of this here, just like that, and I'm left with just one. Now I need to duplicate this for each image that I want to use. Now we're going to have four images in our transition series. Again, this is just for an image to change from one, fade out, and change transition into another. So I need to duplicate this four times. So again, I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And again, I'm just copying the list item here. And then I'm going to go ahead and paste it in once. Oops. Sorry about that. Go ahead and paste that in once there. There we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter a couple times there. I'm just giving myself some additional space and paste it in again. Hit enter a couple times and paste it in again. And again, you should have it in there four times. And at the very end, you should have this item right here. Now, right now, these are just pointing all to the exact same image. So we need to go ahead and point them to the individual images that we're going to use. Now, the individual images that we're going to use here, I'm going to go back into my, whoops, cancel that out. I'm going to come back in here to my folder. And if you look in the images folder, you're going to see banner 1, banner 2, banner 3, banner 4. If you're not using my images um, through this practice exercise, if you're using your own, you just have to go create four images that are 900 pixels wide and 250 pixels tall. But these are the ones we're going to go ahead and use. But again, you can make, you can make your own. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight the value for the source attribute here. Again, that's everything from the opening quote to the closing quote. I'm going to go ahead and type a quotation mark again, hit enter to go into browse, and then I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my images folder. And if I scroll down here, you'll see banner 1, and I'll just click OK there. And I could do this for each one of these, or since I've sequentially named them, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, paste it in there, and change this to banner 2. I'm going to highlight that one, quotation mark, paste, and we're going to go ahead and paste that in as banner 3. Oops, I got a double quote there. And then we'll do it one more time, highlight that there, and paste it in, and this is going to be banner 4. And again, you could do it the first way if you wanted to, to select your individual images. I usually always name my images sequentially like this, so I can tell the very easily the order that I want them in, um, as well as um, um, knowing what they are. So let's go ahead now and see how this is working. I'm going to go ahead and go into Design View here, and I'm going to go into Live View, and let's see what we get. And again, Live View is just going to take a second to come up, and you should see the image begin to transition. Now there's a couple of settings that we need to obviously tweak here. The first is the size of the image here. You can see it's filling up the entire space across, but we do have some extra space down here. My image is 250 pixels deep, and the default in the CSS is for an image that's 300 deep. So we need to go ahead and change that. So let's go ahead and come back in here to slider.css, slider.css. And you're going to see, I'm going to come into code view here, if I go ahead and look at the very first slider that I have here, I have width and height. And you'll see the width is 900, but the height is 300. So I need to change that to 250. So that needs to be the height of the image, and if you were creating an image of a different size, you would also need to change the width of the image. And again, the width is also down here as well. So let's go ahead and see how that changed our design. I'm going to come in here to Design View, and now you should see the image is taking up the full area. 
Now, one more thing that's different in this particular item, um, or this particular illustration from the last example we did, is the last example had this drop-down box in with a semi-transparent background. But our current project doesn't call for that at all. So let's go ahead and get rid of that transparent box. I'm going to come back into my code view, and again, I'm in slider.css right here. So I want to go ahead and scroll down here and you're going to see slider image span right here, slider image span. And you're going to see a bunch of different options in here and most of these options are documented. You can see the comments right here. But the item that I want to call your attention to is this filter item right here. And we're going to go ahead and change the opacity values to zero for all of these. And that way it makes that drop down invisible. So I'm going to go ahead and make that zero, make that zero, just like that. So you should have made all those values zero right there. And I'm going to go ahead and save my changes, and let's go ahead and take a look at the design. And now you should see we do have the transition effect working, but there is no semi-transparent box that's dropped down. Let's go ahead and try this in our browser, and let's see if there's any um, differences. I'm going to go ahead and click on my drop down here and select preview in Chrome. And sorry, that opened in a different place. But there we have it in Chrome. Everything's working fine. I'll close that. Let's try it in Firefox. And again, I'll make this small enough to fit in our window. And you can see the transparency of the effect right there. And actually, I noticed one problem here. We've got a thin little line right there. We need to come back and correct that. Close that out. And let's try it in Internet Explorer and see how it's working in IE. And whoops. That's crashing Internet Explorer. So we'll go ahead and try that in just a little bit when we apply it to an actual page. Sometimes Internet Explorer has trouble opening up DWT files. So now we have our third um, template. And again, let's go ahead and apply that to a page. I went ahead and closed the instructions, and I'm going to close that browser window there. And I'm going to go ahead and create another new file here and I'm going to go ahead and call this one um, wine that's going to be the name of our uh, wine bar page and I'm going to go ahead and double click on that right there I should get a blank page up I'm going to go to modify templates apply template to page there's my slider page and select and there is my design and again, you're not seeing the slider here because we're not in live view, but if I go into live view, after just a moment, Dreamweaver should bring that up. And let's again try this in some browser windows here. I'm going to open this up in Internet Explorer. And my computer's really slow today. I'm, you may need to click Allow Block Content here. And now you should see the transition effect. So we have our third slider that we're going to um, work with, our third slider template that we're going to be able to work with. In the next video, we're going to correct that minor problem that I saw here. Let's make sure that wasn't just in the template. I'm going to open this up in Firefox again. And yep, I've got that line right there. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that problem in the next video.